I've got one of my babies over here and one over here. They love me. <laughs> Hi guys and welcome to my new beauty channel, Leslie Does Makeup. Today I have my very first ever tutorial for you and it is on this look right here. It is a fall inspired look. Um, I love fall time. I think it's beautiful, especially here on the East Coast. Um, what else do I have to say? I am on Instagram at Leslie Does Makeup, as well as the makeup social app at Leslie Does Makeup, which I'm sure a lot of you know because I've made a lot of friends on there. It's a great app. It's really cool. Everyone who shares the same passion, makeup is on there. And if you have any requests for makeup looks, please leave them down below and I will definitely get those out for you. And without further ado, if you are interested in learning how I achieve this look, then please keep watching. Thank you. Bye. Mwah. Hey guys, so I have my foundation on already as well as my eyebrows. I use the Smashbox Studio Skin Foundation um, and then the Anastasia Dip Brow Pomade. And first I'm going to prep my lids for some shadow. I'm using the MAC Painterly Paint Pot. It is my favorite and I'm just applying that with my finger. Um, on top of making your shadow last all day long, it is really great for concealing any redness or discoloration to your lids as well. Okay, so now that we are done finally putting the um, Painterly Paint Pot on, I am going to pick up Bamboo by MAC Cosmetics, and this is going to be my transition color. So I am just dusting that back and forth in the upper crease so everything will be nice and blended with my other colors. And then I am using the E35 Tapered Blending Brush by Sigma. You will be seeing a lot of this brush. I pick it up in between every color and just really buff everything out with it. It is pretty awesome. If you don't have it, definitely pick it up. So next I am picking up Texture by MAC Cosmetics and I am using my Morphe S12 Vegan Blending Brush. This brush is really nice because it's super like dense and packed together so you can really get in the crease nicely and I'm just buffing this very lightly um, in my crease so everything blends in with the next color. Um, this color is totally optional. I just find that it makes everything look a little more blended if I use it. And we're going back in with that same E35 Tapered Blending Brush by Sigma with no additional product, just blending it out. So the next color that I am using is Saddle by MAC Cosmetics. This is probably my all-time favorite brown. Um, it looks great on all different skin tones. So if you don't have it, you should definitely get it. It is a staple, I feel, in everyone's collection. I always suggest it to my clients. Um, when they're shopping for new eyeshadow, it's a great neutral. And I am just using that same Morphe S12 brush and just buffing that on the outer corner and crease. And here I'm having a little dance party. Ignore that. I blast my music when I get ready. And back to the E35 Taper Blending Brush and just buffing it out a little bit more. So now I am picking up a Makeup Geek Shadow and that is in the color Burlesque. I just have it in one of my other MAC palettes and glued a magnet to the bottom of it so it sticks in. That's a trick if you don't want to spend the money and get a Z palette because I know they're expensive. And I am using a MAC 217 blending brush and just dusting that into my crease to add a little bit more warmth and like burgundy to the look. I'm really sorry if you keep hearing a like kind of click in between each voiceover. It's just because I'm using my MacBook. I don't have a microphone lying around, obviously, um, to record this, so it just makes a little noise when I start and finish each clip. And, okay, so next I am pulling out my other MAC palette, and I am picking up Amber Lights. It's this beautiful gold color by MAC Cosmetics, and I am using my MAC 242 Flat Shader Brush, and I'm just packing that down all over my lid. 
It is so gorgeous, and let me tell you, on medium to dark skin tones, this color is awesome. So I am picking up my favorite blending brush again. Um, this is the Sigma E35, the same one I've been using the whole time, and I'm just buffing everything out so there are no harsh lines. Now I am picking up Deep Damson. This is a MAC Pro color, so you can only buy it at Pro Stores or online. I bought mine online because it's just easier, and it only comes in refill form, but it is a beautiful matte burgundy color. And moving right along here, now I'm picking up MAC Cosmetics Typo Graphic. It's like a very charcoal, almost black gray. It's really pretty, and I believe it is a matte too, so it's super smooth. And I'm just keeping that really low, just on the outer V, to add a little bit more smokiness to the look. And I'm using my Morphe S20 pencil brush, and this one is vegan as well. So next I am taking my MAC Pro Longwear Concealer. This is my favorite concealer ever for the under eye area because it doesn't crease or settle into any fine lines or wrinkles. And I am using a damp beauty blender to apply it. And I'm just making kind of like a triangle underneath my eye so everything looks really bright and really lifted. And then I also highlight the high points of my face with it. So um, chin, a little between the eyebrows and above the upper lip on the cupid's bow. And if you tend to be a little bit more heavy handed with your concealer, the Damp Beauty Blender is really great for buffing it out just because it will pick up any excess concealer so you won't have cake face or cakey under eyes. Now that our concealer is all nice and blended in, I am picking up my MAC Pro Shaping Powder in Emphasize and just setting the under eye area with it. And with that, I'm using my Real Technique Setting Brush. Moving on to the lower lash line, this part is totally optional. I personally always love to do it to add just a little more drama to the look. I am taking Max Brown Script on a Sigma Flat Definer E15 and just tightly lining my lash line with that color. And then I'm going to go in my, with my Morphe S20 pencil brush. This is the same one that I was using typographic and just picking up a little bit of that burlesque color. And it's okay if you have a little bit of typographic on it. We are just kind of smoking it out and running it back and forth. Guys, I'm a little sorry that it is kind of amateur hour over here. I am going to work on making my head be a little bit more up so you can see what I'm doing. I'm still getting the hang of it. This is my first video, so bear with me. Now for an inner corner highlight, I am using Amber Lights by MAC Cosmetics again, and that is on a Sigma pencil brush, which is the E30, and just popping that onto my inner corners. Taking my favorite gel liner of all time, this is Inglot's number 77. It is the blackest gel liner I've ever used and it does not move. I am taking a little bit of product on my Makeup Geek Bent Liner Brush, which is also another fave. And I just like to have a tissue nearby just to kind of pinch the brush after I've dipped it in and take off any excess and also pack the brush really tightly so you can get a nice clean line. And I start from the outer corner and just draw a line up towards the brow, and now we are bringing it across now. So kind of about, I would say, two-thirds of the way from the end of the tail, that's when you start bringing it across. Gel liner and wing liner in general, you really have to just, you know, practice and take your time. 
it will get easier. And just remember soft, small strokes and you will get there and it will look great. Moving on to the next eye, we are doing the exact same thing, drawing your wing first and then bringing it across towards the inner corner of the eye. We are finishing our winged liner, and if you have any smudges or fingerprints on your face, just grab your damp beauty blender that you were using earlier for the concealer and just stipple that and it will take care of it like it never happened. For tight lining, I'm taking my LA Girl Glide Gel Liner Pencil in the shade Very Black. I wear contact lenses and it's really hard to find a pencil that doesn't smudge on them, and this one doesn't, which is pretty awesome if you ask me. I am going to be applying false lashes, but just to give my real lashes a coat of mascara, I am using the L'Oreal Voluminous Original Formula Mascara. It's pretty good. I'm not a huge mascara person since I normally wear false lashes. And now I am taking my number 48 lashes. I bought them at Friends Beauty in California. My friend works there and she said that they were their house lashes. They actually look almost identical to the Coco lashes in number 101s. And I am taking my House of Lashes Lash Glue. This is a latex-free lash glue, so everyone can use it. And it smells really good. So just to make the video a little bit shorter, I already have one of the lashes on, and now I'm putting on my other lash. I like to put them on just with my fingers and then touch up with my tweezers, but it's totally up to you how you put them on. I know everyone has their own way when it comes to false lashes, and you just want them as close to your natural lashes as possible. And just to conceal any glue that might be left on the band that didn't dry completely clear, I'm just going to touch up with a little bit of liquid liner and add some mascara to my falsies as well as my lower lashes. I am taking my MAC Golden Bronzer and I'm going to just bronze up and contour the cheeks a little bit. I am pretty fair so I need to use really light products for that and I'm just I kind of tilt my brush on the side and really hollow out my cheekbones and yeah, so just keep buffing in upwards motions. Now I am taking my Studio Care Blend Powder by MAC and this is in the color Medium Dark. It is actually a face powder but it's just in several shades darker and I'm just going to darken up the contour a little bit. Now I'm just diffusing everything with my Real Techniques blush brush. Don't look at my brush. Don't judge me. It's honestly my favorite blush brush ever. But I know it's really ugly and it's cheap and it's crappy, but it works for me. And since I was totally too busy to tell you what blush I was wearing because I was defending myself on the brush I was using, I am using MAC's Well-Dressed Blush. And for highlight, I'm using the Mary Luminizer by The Balm, which adds a really, really nice glow to the cheekbones. And I'm just tapping that on with my finger. I find with tapping out my highlight, and also you'll see I'll be kind of swirling my fingers around in circular motions, I can have a really nice controlled buffed out highlight without using a brush. Now taking my Real Techniques blush brush, I'm just diffusing everything and blending it all together. Before moving on to lips, we are going to set our makeup with Urban Decay's Chill Makeup Setting Spray. On to the lips, I have two lip options for you and first I'm going to just prep my lips with some Prep and Prime Lip by MAC Cosmetics. It kind of creates a barrier between your lip and the lipstick so everything goes on a lot smoother. And now I am lining my lips with NYX Vanilla Sky Lip Pencil. For lipstick, I chose a nude first, and this is by Bite Beauty. This is the Duo Ended Mini Size, and it's in Lychee, Lychee, I don't know. And then I'm going to top it off with Bite Beauty Gloss and Cocoa. This is gorgeous. You need it. And here is the final look with the nude lipstick. Moving on to our darker, more vampy lip, I am lining my lips with 
Jordana Cosmetics Lip Pencil in Cabernet. I have already primed my lips as well with my MAC Prep and Prime. And for lipstick, I chose Max Rebel. I feel like it's such a staple color for fall. A lot of people have it. A lot of different skin tones wear it. And it's a pretty wearable, darker, vampy color without being too over the top to where you're uncomfortable in it. I am just finishing off this look with touching up my lips with my lip pencil. Here is the final look. I really love how it turned out and I hope you guys enjoyed it too. If you recreate the look, please tag me in it at Leslie Does Makeup. I would love to see it. And if you have any requests for me on videos you'd like to see, please leave them in the comments below and I will definitely make that happen. Thanks again for watching and please subscribe to my channel for more videos. See you next time. Bye.